So this was a cute idea. Oh no, she's blooming, she's blooming, she's blooming. Hey folks, I don't know if you all know it, the people on Facebook do, but my husband isn't the only one that likes to cook. I like to cook. I prefer to bake, however. So this is a good thing. My husband actually doesn't like to bake. He feels he's not a very good baker because it's a bit more precise than, you know, just throwing shit together and throwing it in the oven. Um, I have find, there's found in my life that there is some wiggle room. But today I'm going to try my very first ever challah bread. I haven't baked bread in well over a year. So this could be an unmitigated disaster. But we're going to give it a shot. And I thought I'd give to have you come along for the ride. As I showed you earlier, our yeast is blooming beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and get started on everything else from the prep to the stuff. All right. And I have you a little low. So my head is cut off. Hopefully you can see what's going on over here, but I'll try to remember to lift things up. I've never done this before, but we're gonna try to do it together and I'm gonna try to keep you focused over here on what's going on. All right, so I got all my ingredients. I got sugar, I got flour. There are eggs back there. I got my salt. I got some oil, I got my yeast and my water, and I have two bowls. Now this bowl is gonna be for mixing everything in. This bowl is going to be for the rise, as is this towel. This towel needs to be damp, but we're going to dampen it in a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to take a little bit of oil, and we are going to oil the bowl. Oiling the bowl, this big bowl for the rise, um, helps uh, keep the bread from sticking too much to the bowl. I don't want to have too much oil in here. I also want to make sure it's nice and slick. And then I'm going to set this aside. Setting this aside. Out of the way. Okay, so now we can get started on this stuff. Now, challah bread is a little different for me because it has eggs and stuff in it, which means it's an enriched dough. It's not a dough that I have worked with before. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, so... Oh, I'm working with a brand new recipe too, so. Well, we're gonna do this a little bit, just a touch differently. They want you to do the, the yeast and stuff inside a bowl. I tend to do my yeast in a cup and then all my flowers and things in a bowl. Um, I, you want your water to stay warm for your yeast to bloom appropriately. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and put our um, flour in here in the smaller bowl. This requires four and a half cups. This is going to take a minute, folks. I have this little half cup sifter, this little half cup. I try not to press it down. I want my flour to be kind of loose. So there's half. I'm trying to get them fairly level, too. All right, we're going to keep the flour out because I'm going to need it for what I need. Now, I do have my KitchenAid. I have I never, ever used the dough hook on my KitchenAid. All right, next it requires half a tablespoon of salt. I'm going to use culture salt, but salt is salt. Don't listen. Pink salt isn't special. Himalayan salt isn't special. It's all salt. <laughs> they will tell you, oh, yes, you want this. I'm going to do this, measure this over the sink so we don't get extra in like that. Okay. Whoop. Half a teaspoon. You kind of want your salt and your, your yeast not to meet too soon because salt will kill the yeast. You don't want dead yeast. Dead yeast don't rise. All right, so that is my dry ingredients. Flour and salt. We're going to go ahead and whisk those. Try to get them fully, as fully integrated as possible. 
so our yeast doesn't hit a chunk of salt. That should be good. It's nice being right next to the sink. I'm on my side of the kitchen and he's got his side over there that really, really works. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside while we prep the rest of this. So this asks for a quarter cup of vegetable oil, more for greasing the bowl. We already greased our bowl. Uh, give me just a sec. So there are two oils I actually prefer to work with in baking, extra virgin olive, I am on my little stool that helps protect my back so I don't have to stand up. This kneading is going to be fun. Anyway, I like using extra virgin olive oil or grapeseed oil, which I found somehow is really, really makes a lot of my stuff lighter. I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, it wants you to mix the oil in. So we are going to look at this. That is a nice head on that. A uh, cup of yeast. Let, let's bring that up so you can see that. That's beautiful. That's what you want to see. All right, so using my measuring cup, I am going to put in one quarter cup of my grapeseed oil if I have enough, which I may not. But if I don't, yeah, I don't. There's a little bit in there. Doesn't matter. It's done. I'm sad. I need more. I'm going to uh, put in the rest with extra virgin olive oil, which is the other oil I really like. I'm going to try to reach one quarter cup. You can also use canola or plain vegetable oil, but these are the oils I prefer. All right, so that says one quarter cup. There we go. And then it says to add in two eggs, beat in two eggs, one at a time. So I'm going to just um, use a fork. They want you to get this mixed in. So it's whole eggs. It's not half eggs or just whites or just yolks. It's just whole eggs. You can't do half eggs. I suppose a yolk or a white could be anyway. So we're going to start beating that in. You want it well mixed. Oh, baby. Frothy, foamy stuff. And when it looks fairly well mixed and you're not seeing a lot of clumps go through where the white may not have gone, I've found that whites like to stick around for a while. I'm going to go ahead and beat in my other egg. Just put that in there. Again, a lot of this could be simpler with the KitchenAid. I'm not used to using the KitchenAid, and I actually really like doing things by hand. Because, you know what, when you get frustrated, Beating up a loaf of bread is just the thing to do. <laughs> the dough. Okay, so I'm trying to get this yolk and this white on beat in. Okay. So that's that's what it looks like all beaten in. Light and yellow and lemony. All right, so we've done that. And now we're supposed to gradually add the flour and stuff. But I, we're just going to do this. Make a little hole. We are doing some things not not according to recipe. We're just gonna go ahead and get this in here. Now here's the fun part. I am gonna start with a big spatula to mix, but eventually I gotta get my hands in there and get them goopy. So we're just gonna mix this. I'll bring you guys down when it comes time for me to start doing my um, kneading, because you're gonna need, you're gonna need, you're gonna need, you're gonna need. I really want to just get this in here, get this all mixed in, get a good start on it. Yeah. Get a good start on it. I am watching for spots where I'm seeing that the, the liquid is still in pools before I put my hands in. Hand, hands, okay. She's a little stiff. I don't think there's anything in this recipe about adding more water when needed, but. So we're just gonna go with the recipe on that. 
And I am now taking out my spatula. I'm going to try to bring you all down some. I'm going to do the first part of my kneading in the bowl. It's just easier to do it in the bowl for me. All right, so now it's not about me, it's about the bowl. All right, so I'm putting my hands in here and I am trying to get the rest of this mixed in. You want the dough to come together, stick together. You don't want, you don't want some of these flaky things you're seeing in here, these dry patches. You want it all mixed together. Sorry, don't mean to hit you. So we're gonna bring this all together. Trying to bring it all together. This will take probably a little bit of time. I'm having, I've got lots of, if you can see down there on the bottom, you can see some loose flour and stuff like that. You want to get all of that mixed in. Now this is a shaped dough. Um, this particular recipe does uh, a six plat braid. Um, I'm not used to that. I have only done twists and I think I attempted one three plat braid. So we will probably attempt a three plat braid with this and then put it in a circle, which you can also do once you have it braided out. Anyway, so I'm gonna try a three plat braid and um, just trying to, on the one hand, I am, I am pushing myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I mean, part of that too is that I haven't baked in a long time. I mean, I baked for Christmas, but I don't think I did any yeast anything for Christmas. Even my uh, cinnamon rolls tend to be baking powder rolls. So, um, oh, we're there. We're there. Look at that. We're there. Everything, I can pick this up. Okay. So we now need to flour the surface of my board, which is slightly damp there, but that's okay. You don't want to put too much flour on. You, when you're flouring the board and you're kneading, you're adding flour to your dough because it gets worked into the dough a bit. So always go lighter rather than heavier. I went a little heavier than I would like. This is going to be interesting and fun because um, of the way my board and stuff is situated. And I keep bumping you guys. I'm sorry. Let me um, back you up because things are about to be doing the things. Go ahead and take that out like that. Move that over. Sorry. And now we're going to start our knee. There are so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I have my board pushed all the way back as far as I can because when I'm kneading, it's going to move this board around. And I literally do not want it smacking things over. I'm going to move my my salt too. So I have it backed up against things that are backed up against my uh, wall. Uh, wall there and um, the backboard there because you don't want to um, ugh, too much stuff uh, you don't it's harder to knead if your board keeps moving it's also harder to knead if things keep falling on top of it Stop! <laughs> all right so there are several different ways of kneading. This is my favorite way of kneading. Just rolling it, squishing it with the fingers. This takes a little time. A lot of recipes will say, oh, just knead it for five minutes. I like to do something called a window pane test, which I will show you once it's correct. Uh, but this is one way to do it. There are a lot of people who like to take their aggravations out on their bread. Oh, thank God. I haven't done this in so long. Um, and they punch it. Or they throw it. <laughs> I like to just roll it around. <laughs> Limit the damage in my kitchen. And knead until smooth. This feels pretty smooth. I like the window pane test. Because you can under knead and under proof your bread. So. Window pane test, take a small bit of bread, ooh, nice, and then you stretch it out, 
and stretch it out and try to get it as thin as you can. Try to create a small area that is transparent without tearing. That's pretty close. That looks pretty good. Um, considering the position you guys are in, I don't know if you can see it now I tore it. I'm going to knead it a couple more times. This is definitely a nice low knead bread. I like that. I like that. Of course, you don't want to over knead. You're just trying to get your gluten going. Get your gluten going. That's all you're doing. Test now. I'm going to get a bigger piece. Slightly bigger piece. I'm going to work on a window pane. Now, part of this, getting this done, is my fingers are very slightly sticky. I don't want to tear the bread. I just want to open it up. So I just put a little flour on my fingers to try to reduce the stickiness. She is stretching pretty good. And I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. I don't know if you can see between. See where my fingers are? Those are window panes. I think you can see them through there. All right, so this is ready to go. That didn't take long at all. That's a nice bread, and I love the color of it. It's nice yellow from the egg yolks. All right, so I am now going to get my big bowl. Ta -da. Take this. You put it in there. Oh, we are still feeling a little sticky, so I'm going to have to oil this just a little bit more. I guess my towel took out too much. I usually use it uh, like a washcloth or a napkin to do it. They don't seem to absorb it as much. So I'm just getting some more oil in there. Again, you don't want too much oil. You don't need a pool of oil in the bottom. And I'm taking it up the sides because this is going to go up the sides. All right now, let's take our bread, put that in there, and then you roll it around. And you get some oil on it too, using some of those old. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's slightly shiny from the oil. All right, so I am thud. I am going to go ahead and get this damp. And then it's going to go over the top of this and it's going to go in a place where it can sit and rise for the next hour. While it's rising, I'm going to do dishes and put shit away. And then I will be back and we will attempt to braid the bread. I think you braid the bread. Punch down, cover. Oh, you have to punch it down and let it rise again for another half hour. Okay, then. <sighs> I won't show you the punch down. Basically, that's when your bread is risen. You punch it to reduce the air. That's all you do. And then we're just gonna let it do its its other rise and um, then we'll come back and try to, we'll try to do a braid. See you guys in a few. So we are back. Hi. <laughs> uh, I have my pan prepared to go. Now the recipe says to oil the pan. I much prefer to use char parchment so um, it helps with an even brown and um, you don't get an oily bottom. So that's, I, I much prefer parchment overall. And it still helps it come up. Move that out of the way. I have a beaten egg for an egg wash. Whoop. An egg wash, it's coming out. And I have my thing to do that. To put that over our thin shaped bread. I have a scale. Um, and I have a plate. The, the reason I have a plate is because uh, once a bread has risen, I prefer to manipulate it as little as possible. I have noticed if you over manipulate a bread, you can end up with some issues with it. 
rising and baking in the oven. So we put this plate on it. We're gonna put the bread on, the, the dough on top, so I get a full idea of the weight. So I put the plate on it before I turn on the scale, that way it's all zeroed out. And here is our dough. Something that I mentioned, this might be slightly overproofed actually, looking at it, but something I failed to mention when I was putting this in is that you, when your bread rises you want it to double in size. Um, or you can do a poke test. The poke test is not... Neither of these are 100% foolproof, but basically you poke the bread and then you hope it comes back. If it comes back slowly it's proofed correctly. If it comes back too quickly it is underproofed. If it doesn't come back at all it is overproofed. And this one might just be a little bit overproof. Hopefully not too much. All right, so we have 10, it says 1088. I'm not sure what that is. It's one of the measurements. So for me to get three plats, I'm gonna want them each to be, <laughs> as my brain goes, what? So 1088 divided by three, so I'm going to want them each to be about 363, 362 on the scale, All right? So that way they're all kind of even. It just makes it a little easier. So I'm going to now take this off very quickly. Put the bread down here, the dough down here, this dough. And then we are going to try to get three... 82, 83. So I'm gonna pull some bread, some dough, put that there. This is 27. Wow, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pull another one. This one says 29, okay. So this is the one I'm going to be taking stuff off of, I think. Yeah, this one says 51. 510. So I need to take about 150 off of there. What do we say? 383, 382. It says 386. So take another small amount off. Oh, too much. <laughs> this one's me. This one's like, no. All right, so that one is now 382. 278. Let's take half of this. 339. 344. Oh, I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe my math was wrong, even though I used a thing. 353. 362. I'm going to go with 365 for now and see what the other one comes up as. That's 339. Wow. Okay, so... Uh, that's a big difference. I must have misread something. So we got 339, 365, and 382. Let's take a little bit off. Oven's ready! Okay, so that says 364, 363. All right, we're going to put those about right. Let me put these up. All right, so they're just about the same. They're not quite the same. It says to roll them in a ball. I'm just going to try to get them ball-like a little bit. Get them each ball-like. You definitely feel light. I can feel the difference between those two. Okay. So that one is feeling a little bit light on the end. I guess it's feeling about the same as this. This one feels heavy. Okay, so now that I have three balls, because I'm not doing the whole six-plat thing. I can't do the six-plat thing. 
Um, so rolling the ball into a strand about 12 inches long and one and a half inches wide. Since we're doing three strands instead of six, well, we'll just see what we get here. So I think I'm going to aim for, you're saying 12 inches long. This is a 14 or 15 inch board, give or take. So we're just going to go by the board. We're just going to roll these out. This would be fun. My big concern is that this bread will not rise when I'm done because I have done breads where you have to manipulate them and I don't know if I did something wrong. But they, for some reason, when I then put them in the oven, they just don't rise out. I am doing most of my rolling from the middle because I don't want my ends to end up being smaller than my middle. So I'm squishing down from the middle and letting it roll out from there. You want to get them about as equal in thickness all the way. That much I do know. Not having done challah bread before, there are some things I do know that is general to bread. <laughs> Like the temperature for yeast. When you're doing water or milk or something for yeast, you want your temperature to be between 110 and 115. That is burnt into my brain. And a little sugar always helps. And keep the salt away from it. I may not go the full length of this board because that seems a little um, unwieldy to me. That is my little squeaking is my chair that keeps me from having to do this standing up and having my back go bananas on me because it hurts. Stop. All right, so I'm going to roll these real fast time. We'll get them done and we'll come back. We'll come back when they're rolled. You get to watch the... You'll get to watch the attempt at braiding. Promise. All right, so we're coming up on the end of this. I went for the width instead of the length of the board because of the fact that I'm going to be braiding on my board. It did take long to do this. They're about the same. This one's a little short. They're a little short. Let's unshorten you. All right. Set that down. That's about right, and that's about right. So we're going to put this one in the middle, right there. And then we're going to roll these over. They're all about the same. Hello, roll over. And then, so for braiding, this is going to be fun. Because, like I said, I've only done it once, and the only thing I've done before is a twist with two pieces. To, uh, well, actually, it was with three pieces, but I just twisted them. I didn't attempt to braid. I am actually going to attempt a braid. So, in a row, parallel to one another, pinch the top of the strands together. All right, hi. Strands. You need a little bit of... All right, so we're going to take these, and I'm over... I'm kind of overlapping them, and I'm pinching them together, and I'm going to tuck that end under a little bit. Now i got to remember how to braid. I haven't braided in so long, you guys. I don't even braid my hair. I don't know how to braid my hair. <laughs> so it's been a while. It's been a long while. Okay, so one comes over, right? And you want your, from my understanding, is you want your braids to be fairly tight. So I'm moving things around. I'm moving things over. I'm moving that. Move that up. Move that up like that because you don't want holes in the bread this is our middle one now going over it's not going to have much of a braid i guess because i didn't do them very long but it's a braid i did a small braid hey i actually did a braid all right so i'm going to overlap these on top like i did with the other one and then kind of tuck them under. 
Now I'm rethinking trying to put it in a circle because I don't think it'll circle. I think, I don't think it's long enough for that. I think I would have needed to, also my braiding at the top sucks. My braiding at the top wasn't very tight. So I'm gonna lift y'all up. Here's my braid. Yes, the camera's not, hold on. All right, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it. I'm trying here. This is really kind of hard to do. <laughs> There's the braid. We're gonna put it on our sheet pan, right? Y'all better pray for me. Pray for me. My ends are tucked. So we're gonna get our sheet pan that I have the parchment on. So I've got my sheet pan over here. Sorry about that, guys. So I got my sheet pan over here, and then I'm gonna try to carefully lift up my braid. Ooh. Okay. There's my braid. The top is longer than the bottom in terms of the braiding. That's okay. Let's lay that down on my sheet pan. Like that. Ta da! Yay! You know, I think in the future, though, I could probably bait, braid it on the parchment and just pick it up with the parchment. Whatever I'm doing. All right. And now we brush with the egg wash. According to the directions. Now, this calls for um, uh, poppy seeds or sesame seeds, and I know we have some somewhere. I don't know where. I cannot find them. And um, I'm, I'm not going to hunt these the suckers down. Okay. Now this was supposed to be enough egg for two loaves. I did modify this recipe a little bit because I didn't want to do two loaves for my first time. I'm doing this bread. One. And two, I have other shit to do today, folks. <laughs> All right, so put immediately in 375 degree oven. Decorate with seeds. Bake in the middle of the oven for 35 to 45 minutes or until golden. All right, so this is going in the oven. I have it all ready, set to go, and Cross your fingers and we'll, we'll have a really nice loaf when it's done. Talk to you guys within. Hopefully it'll be a pretty loaf that I get to show you. We'll be back. I have a little visitor. She is, she is, <laughs> she is trying to climb up the legs. Okay, get down, baby. Thank you. So here is our finished bread. Now, um, I noticed this tearing when I turn it around. Uh, whenever I bake anything, halfway through the bake, I turn it because I do not have a convection oven, convection oven, and so the back tends to be hotter than the front, and um, I want an even bake. So there's that. Now I'm going to, the next part's going to be more difficult. So there is a way to tell when bread is done. God, this is gorgeous, guys. I'm going to try to flip this. She's hot. She is hot, 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 hot. Fresh out of the oven. Okay, so, ouch. One way to tell a bread is done is to tap it on the bottom. We're gonna hear just the pan. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this. If it sounds hollow, it's done. I think this is done. I think it sounds fairly hollow. So. You don't, uh, you don't go cutting into baked bread right after the bake. You want to you wanna let it cool down enough. Otherwise, you end up um, smooshing some of it. I have noticed this in the past with some of my breads that um, if you cut them too early, uh, it may be a sign they're undercooked. I'm not should, sure, but the interior sort of smashes together. Um, but we will cut this and I will show you this when it is cut. Right now, I am just gonna let it go ahead and uh, sit 
and cool a bit and then I will I will take like an end off or something and we will we will go ahead and take a look at it I'm excited about this for my first hollow that's pretty good this just shows me that it could have used a bit more manipulating than my um, my caution indicated that's all all right so you will be we will be we will be back again soonish so we're going to give this a cut um it feels still a little warm but hopefully it is cooled enough that it's not going to do too much to the bread and then i have a taste tester a taste tester that you all are going to like to see we're just going to cut a little bit off the end oh nice crust as i now pray and hope that my crumb is nice there's no smooshiness on the bottom come on It's fairly open. There's a little bit on the bottom, so it probably could have been baked for another couple of minutes. I did only do it for the 30 rather than the 35. So now I know that I probably want to go closer to the 35, but the rest of the crumb looks good. Take a little bit off. Gonna flip you all around to see the person who's taste testing this bread. <laughs> Say hello. She's taste testing my bread. Needs more salt. Needs more salt? I put exactly what they said in. More salt. Maybe that's why it was just like, I'm gonna rise and rise and rise because salt retards just rising. Just a pinch. Just a pinch? But other than that? Maybe some sugar. It had sugar. Maybe more sugar. Okay. All right. But it's good. It's good. My bread is good. All right, folks. So that was me baking my very first ever challah bread. And now I got to go and bake my dinner. So if, <laughs> if y'all are interested in minor amounts of beauty things, cooking, geeky stuff, stories, I hope you will take a moment to like, subscribe, share, Comment down below and all that. And in the meantime, we'll see you later.